up with introductions in a moment, but today we're going to be talking about using open space for pre-construction and estimating. So agenda for today, we're going to introduce Wesley DuBose and myself, and then we'll talk about um, open space as it relates to pre-construction estimating teams. So we'll talk about pursuit capturing, uh, design, how you can use the BIM, BIM model in open space. And then also Wesley's gonna share lessons learned from past completed projects. Um, so please, as with all webinars, if, if this is your first one, um, or if, if you're coming back from our webinars, please feel free to type in questions in the Q&A box or in the chat box, and we'll do our best to address them. And at the end of the call, we'll also have a, a questions section where you can talk about anything. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm Georgie, so I'm on the customer success team. I work with most of our East Coast customers. And Wesley, I'll let you introduce yourself. Thank you, Georgie. Hello, everybody. I'm Wesley DeBose. I'm on the customer success team as well. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how you can use open space to uh, really maximize your pre-construction efforts. Uh, my most previous position, um, I was actually a customer of open space. I was a project manager for a commercial MEP company building hospitals. Um, and before that, I actually spent a brief stint of time working for a commercial general contractor in their estimating department. Um, so as we go through the software today, I'll hopefully have some good use cases for y'all and kind of help you wrap your heads around why uh, open space is so valuable during your pre-con process. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, three different flavors of pre-con today. And Georgie, if you don't mind, I'm actually going to take screen control from you. Um, so first is going to be pursuit. Uh, which is, you know, how you can use open space in pricing and estimating any of your projects that you are pursuing. After that, we're going to hop over to design um, and how open space can help you account for all of your uh, systems and trades during your preliminary design process. Um, and then we'll wrap things up with lessons learned on how open space provides uh, kind of an unprecedented data set that you can use to help and make informed decisions on any future projects. Um, so we'll go ahead and start off with pursuit. Um, so I know most of the time you think of open space being used as a software on active construction projects, and you don't really hear too much about it being used by an estimating department. Um, but we actually have a lot of customers in open space, uh, some even that use open space just for their pre-con and estimating efforts. Um, they'll have each project that they're pursuing listed as a project in open space that they'll go out and do one-time captures on that they can refer to during the estimating process. Um, the great thing about open space is it's 10 times faster and produces 100 times more complete photo documentation of your projects in, pursu uh, in pursuit. Um, speaking from personal experience, I know the traditional method of uh, taking any pictures for your pre-con projects, you usually send a project team member out to a site, especially on any existing facilities where you're trying to document all the existing conditions. That person will use their phone or a camera to take a bunch of 2D photographs that they will then come back, upload into their computer and try to store in some kind of file structure. Uh, those file structures can typically be difficult to navigate and the 2D photos sometimes don't produce everything that you need to see. Um, typically what you actually need to see is a picture taken four feet to the right that you don't have. Uh, what's great about open space is it's 100% complete photo documentation of your projects in 360 degrees and it's all mapped to your floor plans. Um, so no matter where you are, uh, you can just view any site that you're pursuing from the comfort of your own cubicle, eliminating the need for travel time. And it also really reduces the time you spend navigating those uh, file structures and setting them up because you have the entire physical space digitally stored in open space um, ready to navigate. Uh, this can allow you to, you know, account for multiple issues on the project that, you know, maybe need to be remediated that aren't shown in the design documents that you're estimating off of. Um, and this can be easily tracked and documented using our field note uh, feature to communicate them. Um, so to start off, I have a quick use case uh, for this, where let's say hypothetically, you are pursuing this project right here, um, and you are estimating what it will take to come in and finish out this apartment complex. Um, this contractor right here uh, had a really great use case for open space where they came through and they documented any areas of the project that had water damage. So that way they could go back um, and include any water damage in their estimates and make sure it's getting accounted for in their pricing. Anywhere where they saw an area that needed water damage, they would just snap a quick picture, create it as a field note on the project, tell you what room they're in and that there was water damage that needed to be remediated. And you can see they're scattered about the mini map up here where anywhere on this floor plan, you can see 
anywhere where there's water damage that needs to be um, fixed. So really easily map to your floor plans. Uh, you can make sure all these issues are getting documented. And you can actually come over to the left-hand toolbar here and click on field notes. And this gives you a list of every field note uh, created for your project to date. And you can see in each of the water damage field notes, they type a water damage in the description. So I can actually just come up here to the search bar and type in water damage. It gives me a list of each of my water damage field notes. And I can create a report of these field notes by hitting my field note report button giving my report a name. So we can name it water damage report, hit request report, and it emails me a compiled PDF document of all the field notes that I filtered by. Um, this is what that report looks like. So it gives you a cover page for your project with all the info for it, um, a summary of how many field notes are included, and then it gives you a table of contents of all the water damage field notes that have been included. This gives you a nice document uh, that you can then go back re and refer to to make sure it's getting included in your estimate um, for the project. Uh, I know water damage in an existing facility is not something that would typically be included in the design documents or the construction documents you're basing your pricing off of. Um, so open space allows you to get visual, visual photo documentation of your project and allow you to identify any of these issues that may need to be included in your pricing. Um, each field note is a separate document in the report, so you can see it gives me a nice document showing me where on the floor plan an issue is occurring, what direction you need to be looking in, and a picture of the actual issue. Um, so not only does it provide you the information that you need for a more accurate estimate, but it also provides nice photo documentation if you're ever asked to back up any of your pricing. So moving on from pursuit, um, the next thing that I want to cover is how you can use open space in your preliminary design processes. Uh, again, speaking from personal experience, I know most of the times when you're going to be working on an existing facility, uh, any facilities that may already have trades installed, such as, you know, an, uh, an office fit out or if you're building out, you know, a level of a hospital, uh, a lot of times the as-built drawings or the as-built BIM model that you're given um, is not really an as-built and it doesn't accurately reflect the current uh, routing of all the trades and systems installed in the project. There will typically be cable trays, fire lines, duct running all over the place on the site that's not shown for in the model. Open space allows you to compare what's actually on the job site um, versus your as built or preliminary BIM models and allows you to um, account for and coordinate around those systems and trades in your project. Uh, so that way you can start modeling your project based off of what's actually there and you don't run into any costly clashes in the field. A quick example for y'all here um, is. On this project right here, let's say you're estimating going in to do uh, a finish out of this office space and you're given an as-built BIM model and you're going through and you're trying to ensure that all systems are accounted for. This uh, project has the BIM model uploaded so we can use our BIM viewer feature to open this up. And you can see I'm able to compare what is on site versus what, has, uh, what is supposed to be installed on the site for the um, as-built model. Now let's say hypothetically, we have a fire line running on the site that's not shown in the model. You can bring this up and I'd really easily identify any of these issues. So huge for your BIM modelers who usually never get uh, visual access of a project. They can come in here and see that there's a fire line running on the site that's not shown in the model. They can send somebody out there to take measurements so that way they can account for it and coordinate it in the model. So that way, whenever actual coordination for construction begins, um, it's in there, it can be coordinated around and you don't run into any costly change orders or clashes in the field during the actual uh, construction process. Um, also great if you don't even have a BIM model, as long as you have your uh, as-built drawings, you can just have open space up, be comparing it against your as-built drawings in front of you. And uh, you know the goal here is just to make sure that all the trades are accounted for as you're estimating. So that way you're not running into any big clashes down the road that can result in very costly change orders. Um, lastly, we're going to be talking about lessons learned. Um, so open space allows you to use data from past projects to make informed decisions uh, on future projects. You can get key insights to certain stages from your job and also compare similar projects from the past to your current uh, pre-construction projects. Um, open space really gives you unprecedented access to uh, what the uh, stages of your projects look like during construction that you can use to make informed decisions in the future. For example, if you have a project that went 40% over on your material handling and you're not sure why, 
you can actually go back into a project during construction, go look at the material hoist in open space and maybe see that there's a line of 30 contractors waiting to get their material into the building. Um, so you can actually get key insights uh, and instead of just asking project team members on what they think happened during construction that went wrong and why you went over on certain things, um, you can actually go into uh, different projects, see what was actually happening during construction and get key insights that you really weren't able to before. Um, this is the same uh, even with things like drywall. If you go 40% over on material uh, handling and labor with drywall, you can go into the project while drywall was being hung and see what the site actually looked like. Was there any hindrances or any unforeseen conditions that we didn't know about that maybe caused this to happen? And um, really just use it to help improve your estimating efforts into the future. Uh, also, you can use this to compare similar projects. So for instance, if you're uh, estimating a hospital project and you have hospital projects that have been completed in the past in open space, that is an unprecedented data set that you can give to your estimating team where they can go back and look at similar hospital projects from the past, uh, see all that photo documentation of the entire construction progress and use it uh, to make a really informed estimate on the hospital that they're currently estimating. Um, so especially useful whenever you're building a lot of the same types of projects and you have that uh, data from projects past in open space. Um, it allows you to actually and visibly see successes and failures from past projects and just really helps improve your uh, overall pre-construction efforts. Um, so that really covers uh, everything that I had to go over today. I can go ahead and open up uh, for questions or comments for anybody uh, that um, wants to be on. Uh, we only have four attendees, it looks like. So actually, if any of you want to be promoted to a panelist and uh, you know share your screen and actually talk to us, uh, you can feel free to do that. I know Wesley just covered a lot. Um, so is there anything in particular that you'd like us to show in open space or it doesn't have to be related to what we just covered too. If there are any other questions that you have, we're happy to happy to address them. I'm good. That was good, though. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Cameron. Thank you, Cameron. You're the man. No problem. Wesley, you could have like invited me and talked yourself up yesterday when we had our meeting. Yeah, I could have, but we, you know, we'll get you on a future webinar, no doubt, Cameron. No, no, no. You didn't even tell me you were doing, you were going to be featured on this. Oh yeah. I guess it just slipped the mind. So modest. <laughs> Wesley's run quite a few of these. Um, and Cameron, I know you, I saw you commented on the community post too about topics. If there are any ideas you have on upcoming topics, please let me know. Or if you're interested in joining or leading one of our webinars, would love to have you. Yeah, absolutely. I've been trying to think all morning. <laughs> Thanks. We appreciate it. I have a quick question. Uh, I mean, the reports that are generated are amazing. Is, is there a way of, uh, you know, incorporating our sort of logos and signages on those reports? Uh, yes, yeah, so you can actually get your logos on FieldNet reports. Um, it is reserved for our enterprise customers. Uh, so enterprise pricing is uh, we take your total construction volume. Okay. Uh, and we base pricing off of that. So you get unlimited capturing and use across your entire organization. Along with uh, being an enterprise customer comes other benefits, such as uh, getting your logo and branding on all of your reports and having a dedicated customer success associate for your account. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll check. I believe we are, but uh, what would be the process for that? Do we have to reach out to you guys or? Um, you... Yes. Go ahead, Georgie. Sorry, Wesley. I, uh, I think Ron, is Ron Leon your account executive, AJ? I believe so. Uh, okay. Is it Ron? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, let me, let me check. And I. Uh, yes. Perfect. Um, so you can do a, a couple ways you can reach out. You can directly reach out to Ron or you can reach out to uh, your customer success associate, Alex, if you've spoken with him. Um, if you're not sure who either is, it's support at openspace.ai. Just say, 
this is what I'd like. Please get me in touch with the right people. Okay. But if you already 